Hi, I'm Charcy Curtis. Some of you may know me as Susan Diva out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. This is the On For God Movement podcast, where, where we allow everyday people to tell their testimony. But today, I have a special guest, my family, the mayor, <laughs> Mitch Coven, with me today. So I'm going to let him introduce himself because he got so much to say or whatever. Just explain to the people who you are and what you got going on. And thank you again for fitting me in your busy schedule. Listen, <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you, Charcy. So again, uh, I'm Mitch Colvin, the mayor of the city of Fayetteville since 2017. Congratulations. Uh, this is family. I appreciate the opportunity to come in and, and chop it up a little bit today about, you know, just some of life's lessons, testimonies, and talk about how good God's been to me mm -hmm. in my life. So amazing story, mm -hmm. amazing journey. Look forward to what we're talking about today. Okay, well, we're going to jump right in these questions. I know you're a very busy man, and I appreciate you again for fitting me in your schedule. So how long have you been in politics? So I was first elected to city council in 2013. Okay. What inspired you to want to become mayor? Well, I didn't have the aspirations to be the mayor. Um, you know, I, I started to get more and more interested in what was going on or the lack of what was going on in my community. You know, I grew up uh, here uh, in on the Merchant Road area. Mm -hmm. um, family has a business over there. Mm -hmm. And 2012, 2013, I started getting a little more involved in the local politics. and. Decided to run for office because I believe that, you know, you have to be at the table to create real change. Right, right, right. What changes do you plan on making if you become mayor again? Well, you know, I started out 2017, you know, when the people first trusted me for this um, mm -hmm. with a mission to, you know, one, improve the quality of life of the people here, make sure there were more jobs available, make sure that the housing was affordable, that they could, they could afford to raise a family here. Make sure they made a decent wage that they could take care of their families. Mm -hmm. And now, um, as we phase into the fourth term, if God sees fit for that, mm -hmm. you know, I kind of want to continue investing in people, you mm -hmm. know, prepping people for the next generation jobs that are coming. Uh, you know, technology is changing all of our lives and, and jobs that exist today uh, won't exist in a few years. And so I want to make sure the workforce is ready. I want to retain the next generation young people. I have three daughters. I always talk about getting them to come back home or to stay here mm -hmm. uh, and raise their family and their kids. And a lot of people can, uh, you know, uh, relate to that because kids go off to school and right. they never come back home. And then three, you know, I kind of want to continue um, rebranding this community. You know, it got a bad rap uh, yeah. for a number of years, but, you know, we've been able to show the positives of, of what Fayetteville has to offer and I uh, want to continue that story. Okay. How do you handle challenges and setbacks in your work, your work and your personal life? Well, you know, one is, uh, you know, you try to, one is, you know, I definitely stay rooted in, in, in prayer. I try to yes. start my everyday off with that. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I read the scripture and try to set time aside for that, for yeah. the principles. The principles work. Mm -hmm. you know, God's principles don't change. Mm -hmm. But what I will say is that, you know, I've got this determination spirit. You know, it, it inspires me when people tell me you can't do something. You know, I kind of like to defy the odds that, that are set against you. And so, you know, I always look at it. Uh, in a way that to show that, you know, he brought me through certain situations that I know he'll see me through the rest of it. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of compartmentalize, you know, sometimes things feel like they're coming up from all angles. Yeah. And I like to break it down and, and to make sure that you look at things for what they are, because a lot of times, you know, you'll see things from worse in a worse situation than what they, they really are. Mm -hmm. So I, I set everything aside and analyze it individually. And that, that kind of helps me out. OK. What advice would you give someone starting want to start to be in the industry you in or pursuing a similar path? So, you know, on the business side, uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur and I, I think that anyone should follow their passion and dreams, but do it in a way in which, you know, it's something that you've, you've done your homework. You take calculated risks and, and you, you understand that you're not going to start out at the top. So you've got to be committed to the cause. You know, on the political side, same thing. You know, you've got to have that passion to want to help and make change in the community uh, and for other people. And, you know, I think politicians get off track when uh, they make it all about what's in it for them. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, every day yeah. I, I pray that uh, it's all about putting the people first that you represent. So make sure that you've got a, a real passion for it mm -hmm. because it's a thankless job. Mm -hmm. You know, you won't make money out of it, uh, but your satisfaction has got to come from being able to help somebody. Okay. How do you stay motivated and creative in your day-to-day -day life? Uh, well, again, you know, I believe life's a balance, okay. you know, I, and I think that it starts at the top with, you know, your, your, your spiritual connection. So mm -hmm. I, I definitely started out with, with a prayer to, to acknowledge that. And, and then I believe that you balance work, family, and, and, and play, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I try to 
live by that. You know, I, there's times when you kind of feel overwhelmed in either one of those areas, and mm-hmm. you've got to make sure that you, you balance it, and that, that helps me get through it. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about your childhood experience? Yeah, I mean, you know, I grew up, you know, I had a uh, got a younger brother, got an older brother and sister, mm-hmm. uh, two sisters and an older brother, and one my older brother just passed. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we grew up two hardworking working. You know, regular middle class families uh, had good parents that they both own businesses. They taught us hard work is the way that you make it in mm-hmm. this world, and uh, they taught us how to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and for the most part, I think I, they did very well by us. They sacrificed a lot mm-hmm. to make sure that we had, mm-hmm. and I'm appreciative of it. And so, you know, I thank my, my parents for giving giving me the start to be able to to own a business mm-hmm. and to be able to continue, you know, the family legacy that they started. So. Great childhood and very blessed. So thank you, Mama. <laughs> Can you tell the people the business of the funeral home? Yeah, yeah. Please. So, <laughs> yeah, so uh, my <laughs> parents started uh, Colvin Funeral Home back in 1971. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, my brother and I worked in there mm-hmm. uh, for a time. And then uh, I expanded that into Lumberton and to uh, uh, Affordable Cremations, which is located here in Fayetteville also. Okay. What was that moment like when you truly is self-examining yourself? Well, you know, sometimes... You know, you try to stay grounded, and, and you sometimes things will expose or uh, allow you to see a certain side of you that you may can't, that other people perceive or see that you can't. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I always like to keep that perspective in mind that, you know, you're not better than anybody. Right. You, you just, you just, you know, in, in some cases, you've had a, a different opportunity. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I try to always self-analyze that, try to stay humble and, and keep it, you know, keep it real with as much as you can with, with people that you deal with mm-hmm. and people detect that genuineness right. uh, typically they, they can tell kind of when you're putting on and they can tell when you when you're real about it okay if the word I was a person or the word we was a person which one would say best fits you and why uh, I always typically even though I just didn't do it <laughs> I, just, uh, I, I say we you okay. know I uh, right. I include my team I try to do that on any level that, mm-hmm. I, that I've Refer to success, you know, okay. because I, I think that um, that really talks about the humanity. I think that mm-hmm. if you, the humility, I think if you do what you're supposed to do, your shine will come mm-hmm. naturally anyway, and you don't have to work for it. Yes. Have you ever been in a dark place? And if so, how did you pull yourself out of it? Definitely. I think, you know, if any of us are real with it, mm-hmm. we, we've all been in a dark place at some point, mm-hmm. um, you know, and, and there are a number of things that, that bring us there, whether it's a loss of a family member uh, or someone that you think you depended on, mm-hmm. um, whether it's relationships, whatever mm-hmm. it is. And so, um, again, sometimes you, you do have to take a step back mm-hmm. and look at the situation for what it is because, you know, the devil always tries to magnify everything, mm-hmm. make it seem like uh, it's, it's a real urgency or catastrophe. But I think that putting things in perspective has helped me, you know, that you – you know, going through the political process, mm-hmm. people say a lot of bad things about you, right. and, and they say it publicly, and that's what mm-hmm. you subject yourself to. But at the end of the day, you know who you are, mm-hmm. and you've got to always put it in perspective mm-hmm. that I don't read necessarily social media comments, mm-hmm. and, and that used to impact me some, but I know at the end of the day, I'm, I'm still who I am to right. my children and to the people in my immediate circle that matter. Right, right. How was it like growing up as a child, you know, do you see death different? Yeah, um, you know, we grew up in in that business, um, Mm -hmm. and, you know, you are confronted with loss at an early age, Mm -hmm. and I think that has had its positives and negatives. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I think that it helps you get through circumstances Mm -hmm. and help other people get through circumstances, because a lot of people typically have not uh, had a significant loss at a very Mm -hmm. early age. You know, I remember... Um, a couple of classmates got killed in, mm-hmm. in, in school, and I remember the earliest one, um, probably in seventh or eighth grade, a girl that we was in school with, mm-hmm. um, somebody you ride the bus with and, and all of that, um, was killed at an early age. And mm-hmm. so, you know, and our, our funeral home handled it, and mm-hmm. it was it was kind of different to, mm-hmm. to know somebody uh, that you were in class with a few days before is, is now in the funeral home. So mm-hmm. um, it it, it helped in that respect to mm-hmm. be able to understand that there is a tomorrow once right. you turn the page. Mm-hmm. Um, downside is that, that I think that uh, it, it took a lot of my parents' time away mm-hmm. uh, because when when they're small business owners, they spend a lot of time in the business, and sometimes that means that they're not there mm-hmm. for every little thing. And so mm-hmm. I remember that you know when you're playing sports or you're doing other things that, that other people's parents were there mm-hmm. and, and yours may not be but they were out working trying to sacrifice and make a good living for us yeah what keeps you grounded 
Um, you know, I'd say I say perspective. I think that that my two worlds work well together because on the funeral side, that that makes me interact with people right. and people from all walks of life, right. all income brackets, whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, I've got that personable relationship with them. Mm-hmm. On the political side, I mean, you know, it can get. If you're not grounded, it, it can probably take some people to a different space. Mm-hmm. I mean, you get an opportunity to meet or talk to a president or, or mm-hmm. some some you know mm-hmm. higher officials mm-hmm. that, that sometimes you know you can you can allow that to to paint this picture that you that you that you've arrived. Mm-hmm. But you know, at the end of it, I, I think that keeping uh, myself rooted in in what uh, the scripture says about all of that mm-hmm. about arrogance and and uh, humility, mm-hmm. and I think that. Also, my kids, you know, they, mm-hmm. they tell they tell it to me like it is. They mm-hmm. don't care if you're the mayor or whoever you are. It, you know, mm-hmm. daddy, I'll let you know what I think about it. And, mm-hmm. and, and that helps a lot. That helps a lot. Okay. What is something you ask God for and you wish you could have been a little bit more specific about it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> There's a long list of that. <laughs> and, uh, that, uh, that um, you know, sometimes we think we know what we want. Right. right? Mm-hmm. And we may ask for something that you really don't need. Right. Uh, because he allows free will and choice, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. he allows us to go through that path. And mm-hmm. so, you know, I can say that about relationships. Mm-hmm. I can say it about a lot of stuff. <laughs> okay. uh, so that's, that's, a, that's a trick question. I think I did learn as as I got more mature mm-hmm. in that, mm-hmm. that um, you do have to tell him what you want specifically. Yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely. And, um, you know, that is that's one of those principles that mm-hmm. I, I specifically have to ask what I want. Now, mm-hmm. you know, he'll have three answers, either yes, no, or wait. Mm-hmm. And right. So, you know, I, like I have that. to have to learn how to accept whichever. Okay. How did you turn your pain into power? <sighs> so, <clears throat> I think that I, I was going through a lot of, you know, life transition in mm-hmm. um, 2017 when I ran for mayor. Um, you know, I was going through a divorce. I was dealing with uh, being a single parent. Now, uh, my kids' adaption to the, the, the new reality Mm-hmm. And then I decided to submerge myself in politics, which that that my first race as mayor got real dirty. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> he talked about a lot of personal things, mm-hmm. and so, um, you know, there was some dark times during that. Mm-hmm. But you know, I had good people around me. I mm-hmm. had family that was very supportive. I had my kids that I looked at every day, mm-hmm. and um, you know, I'm thankful once I got to the other side of that for mm-hmm. having to go through it mm-hmm. because it, it indeed made you and prepared you for for a lot worse. Mm-hmm. Okay. What is something you want people to know about you that they don't know? <laughs> I don't know. You know, it's like you live your whole life in a bubble. Right. So everybody you know, knows a lot about you with personal things that, that mm-hmm. they ordinarily wouldn't know. But, mm-hmm. you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, I, I just uh, appreciate being a regular guy that's mm-hmm. able to, to, to deal with people on a regular level. Mm-hmm. Um, and something specific that they may not know that... Um, you're real down to earth kind of guy. Huh? You real down to earth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. I try, try to be. I try to keep it like that, you know. Um, so, what they don't know, I don't know that that I, I like to travel. Okay. You know, I like uh, you know I like to move quietly. I like mm-hmm. to go places where people don't know you and just right. just blend in. I understand. What is what was that moment like when you realized God was real without a shadow of a doubt? So give me a testimony. Man, so many, you know. Um, you know, but but specifically, there have been some situations that you just feel like you are backed in a corner and up mm-hmm. against a wall, and there is no way out. And right. you do that last cry out, you know, mm-hmm. and then you look up, mm-hmm. and he throws you this lifeline. Mm-hmm. I mean, and I've got, like, so many different examples of that, mm-hmm. of how he showed himself, and, mm-hmm. and things that he turned in my favor that were not supposed to be... Mm-hmm. That way, so you know, I've got a long list. He'll take a whole another show. To talk about. <laughs> well, we gonna have you back. <laughs> but do you remember that one time when you um, when you first ran, and it looked like you weren't gonna win. Yeah. And I said, God said it's, it's, it's in your control. Like if you want it, yeah. you want it, mm-hmm. it's yours. Yeah. And push it right on over. Well, you know, you uh, before the show started, you asked me if I remember what you told me, mm-hmm. and I definitely do. Mm-hmm. I refer back to it even now mm-hmm. that you know that he. Make sure that every time that I'm I'm speaking or, mm-hmm. or anything is happening, mm-hmm. I always try to reference God about mm-hmm. it, right. <clears throat> so that He gets the glory about that. Yeah. So, do remember that, and you know He uses people, use you mm-hmm. in that moment just to give you 
enough encouragement to keep pushing. Right. And so a lot of times, so any of your listeners out there, mm-hmm. you feel like you're at the end of the rope, you feel like you, you, you know, you're in a no-win situation, mm-hmm. you know, there's somebody that will come by and encourage you mm-hmm. to keep pushing. Mm-hmm. What's more important, your loyalty, love, or respect? I think love. Okay. Well, matter of fact, I know love. Okay. Because it's unconditional. It, it lasts longer. Okay. You know, loyalty lasts until it's not in that person's best interest to mm-hmm. be loyal. Mm-hmm. Respect, you know, um, you earn it. Mm-hmm. People may respect you, but they may not lo- love you and they may not be loyal to you. Mm-hmm. But I think love is is, is it because that, uh, you know, uh, helps you get through any situation. Right. What came to your mind when you first seen I'm For God? You know, it was catchy. I mean, it really, it, it says so much in, mm-hmm. in just that phrase. And then, you know, when you first came out with it, I, I would wear the shirt to the gym, and I had so many people ask me mm-hmm. about it. And, you know, I mean, it's a declaration. It tells it tells you and tells the world who it is that you're standing with, that you're rocking with. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm rocking with God. I'm for him. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if, if you're for him, he's for you, and that's more than the world against you. So. Exactly. Lead the people with something positive. Well, you know, just always remember that, um, you know, keep God first. Everything else will line up as a fact. You know, re- rely on the principles that, that are in the Bible. Read it. You know, I know it's, it's uh, cliche-ish, but there, everything that you need is in, is in that, and uh, his word holds true regardless. So um, something positive, always keep pressing, never mm-hmm. give up, stay mm-hmm. focused, and be determined about anything that you plan to do. Okay, and I want to tell you thank you again so much. And this is up to you once again, guys. <laughs> you know, if you want it, you definitely can have it. As long right. as you get the glory out of it, you definitely can have it. Yeah. But, y'all, I want to say thank you so much. I love you, but remember, God loves you more. You just never know who I'm going to have on here. See you next time.